So reports first surfaced a week or so ago, indicating that Cristiano Ronaldo had asked to leave Manchester United if a suitable offer was made for him in this transfer window. The reason behind this that was given was that Ronaldo didn't feel that United could challenge for trophies next season, likely due to their slow start to the transfer window. The fact that Ronaldo waited until July to say this indicates to me that this isn't solely about Champions League football, as if it was solely about Ronaldo playing Champions League football next season, then he would have pushed for a move towards the end of last season, when it started to become increasingly clear that United wouldn't make the top four. But before I go any further, if you need a place where you can keep up to date with the latest transfer news, find all the match stats you need from games across the globe, and watch highlights and stream live football matches, then you need to download the OneFootball app. I use the OneFootball app because it's completely free, and not only do they have stats and transfer news, but they also have videos to watch and articles to read, which is where I get a lot of my ideas for new videos, and as I said before, you can stream live football matches and watch highlights all on the app. Downloading the OneFootball app will help support the channel as well, so I'll I'll leave it linked in the description below. What I think this is actually about is Ronaldo trying to put pressure on the United ball to make big money moves in the transfer window. Ronaldo is probably looking at the situation right now thinking, after at least two months of being able to negotiate with players and teams, United have only brought in a left back in Tyro Malasia and a player who was a free agent in Christian Eriksen and are still only in verbal conversations with players like Frankie de Jong, Anthony and Lissandra Martinez, with the Anthony and Frankie de Jong deal still not looking particularly close. Add to that the fact that United have lost Paul Pogba and suddenly you can't help but feel that the current United squad at this point is even weaker than the one that finished last season. Compare this to Manchester City who have brought in Haaland, Julian Alvarez and Calvin Phillips into their squad whilst Liverpool have added Darwin Nunes, Tottenham have added Basuma, Perisic and Richarlison and Arsenal with Fabio Vieira and Gabriel Jesus. And you can see why Ronaldo may feel that United aren't just falling behind in the title race but also in the top four race. Ronaldo probably thought that best case scenario United could make two two or three early big moves and then bring in another two or three players from here. But once again, United seem incapable of moving for a player before at least a month or two of rumours linking them with the player. Now, the Malasia deal did kind of go against his narrative, even still he was linked heavily a month or so before the deal actually happened. And to me, it seems like United are far too sluggish in the transfer market and Ronaldo probably agrees as well. So my theory is that there's still a high probability that Ronaldo stays as I don't think he's going to force a move against United's will, but also because any deal to take Ronaldo away Away from United is going to be quite complicated. See, Ronaldo still has one year left on his Manchester United contract, and so that means that United are going to demand a transfer fee. I think United should demand at least £20 million, which people may say is too much because of his age and his wages, but you have to factor in that United don't want to sell him, and don't need to either. There are reports that Manchester United have set their asking price for Ronaldo at around €15 million, Euros, which is around £12 million, which I think is quite a low fee. I would charge at least £20 million because you have to factor in that Robert Lewandowski from Bayern Munich is in the exact same stage of his contract, is only a few years younger on a similar wage package, and he is being touted around for around the £40 million mark. The reason Ronaldo went for a fee in the region of £20 million from Juve to Manchester United was because Juventus actively wanted to get his wages off of the books, and so were willing to reduce their asking price in order to do so. So once you factor in the £20 million transfer fee, his wages of at least £400,000 per week at a new club, most likely around £25 million per year if he doesn't take a wage cut plus agent fees and signing on bonuses, whilst also being a club that actually needs a centre forward and doesn't mind signing a 37 year old on big money for two, possibly three seasons. From here, the list of clubs that could be an option is quite short, but from my point of view, there's three, maybe four viable clubs for Ronaldo to move to, AC Milan, Bayern Munich and Napoli, and the fourth club I'll come on to later on in the video. So if AC Milan was serious about bringing Ronaldo in, then I think they would have had to forget about re-signing Ibrahimovic, but they have given him a new one year deal and I do think Ronaldo could still be brought in but they would have to get rid of Olivier Giroud but ideally this would have happened earlier on in the summer and Giroud and Zlatan Ibrahimovic would have been allowed to leave getting around 10 to 12 million pounds of the wage book. Now I do admit that this is probably a rather financially unattractive deal for Milan however let's just assume that the Milan hierarchy and Pioli okay the deal which I don't think is impossible even though I do think it's unlikely. So how does Ronaldo at Milan under Stefano Pioli look on the pitch? Well, Ronaldo at the age of 37 is now a traditional centre forward Forward. So I think he'd start as a focal point in Pioli's 4-2-3-1 with Brahim Diaz behind him centrally 
Rafael Leal to his left, and either Rebic or Salamakas, or even a new signing like Hakim Ziyech to his right. I think Ronaldo's world-class off-the-ball movement in behind the back line will perfectly suit Milan's quicker transition in attack, whilst the crossing output from Teo Hernandez on the left flank and Hakim Ziyech if signed from the right flank will get the best out of Ronaldo's offensive aerial ability. As both players are top-level crossers, with Ziyech being an in-swinger from the right, and Teo Hernandez capable of a variety of different crosses from the left side. Ronaldo would provide a young Milan team with a world-class finisher, which even with Zlatan and Giroud, I think they do lack, particularly at the highest level. I would say that a Milan side with Ronaldo in would not only cement their place as the favourites for the Serie A title, but also put them amongst the contenders for the Champions League as well. And so whilst being expensive, having Ronaldo for a season or two could take Milan back to the heights of the Ancelotti era. However, at the moment, Milan are adhering to quite a strict wage structure with the highest earner currently being Ante Rebic. After Ron Magnoli and Ibrahimovic's contracts ended this summer, with the Croatian on just 3.5 million euros a year, meaning that assuming Ronaldo earns the same as he does at United, Milan would be paying Ronaldo the equivalent of nearly 10 times their current highest earner. And so when you look at it from that point of view, it's hard to make a case for this transfer from Milan's point of view, or at least one that doesn't drastically trade long-term squad building for potential short-term success. At Bayern Munich, Ronaldo would also be joining a domestic champion, but you'd have to say that it is a Champions League where Ronaldo would have to make the difference for Bayern. I'd back him to score between 25 and 30 league goals for Bayern, with Lewandowski making that seem normal, and Bayern winning the title more often than Putin wins elections in Russia. Winning the Bundesliga yet again whilst adding to Ronaldo's collection is not going to improve his legacy substantially. That said, at Bayern, Ronaldo would be at one of the top five Champions League contenders, and having not won the title since Jupp in 20. 2020 and then before that in 2013, winning the Champions League again is definitely on the cards for the Bavarian club. But once again, from Bayern's point of view, any deal would be complicated. Lewandowski would have to leave, with his move to Barcelona still uncertain, requiring the Catalans to stump up around 50 million euros or 45 million pounds that Bayern are demanding. They say that Bayern get that, then they need at least 15 to 20 million pounds to be used as a transfer fee to bring Ronaldo to the Allianz, but then you have to factor in agents and signing on fees, as well as an increase in the wage budget of around 7 million euros, with Lewandowski earning 23 million euros a year right now, and Ronaldo currently on 30 million euros at Manchester United. I think Bayern would prefer to keep Lewandowski, and so would I. Not because Ronaldo isn't at the level needed, but because Lewandowski is probably the best striker in world football at the moment, despite his age, and so by bringing in Ronaldo for Lewandowski, it's questionable whether Bayern have even improved or declined. But Lewandowski does want to leave, and so unless Bayern want to hold him against his will, they do need to look for a replacement. And this Bayern are going to try to prize away Lataro Martinez or Victor Osimhen for big fees, there aren't too many obvious replacements for Lewandowski. Ronaldo would come in, bring world-class goal-scoring ability that would be left by Lewandowski, and even though he wouldn't be the perfect forward for Nagelsmann, I could see a front three of Mane from the left as an inside forward and Gnabry holding his width as a natural right winger, either side of Ronaldo working quite well. And maybe Ronaldo would give Bayern that extra bit of top-level quality they need in the Champions League. Being able to pull a rabbit out of the hat when Nagelsmann needs it most. Whilst Bayern don't usually sign aging players on big wages, with Lewandowski potentially departing, a void in the wage structure and on the pitch would be left, and so I would say that the deal does make sense for Bayern and Ronaldo under certain circumstances. Now I did say that I thought there were only three options, Bayern and Barca who have already discussed, and Napoli who I will come on to, but there is a fourth, more controversial option that has been speculated quite heavily in recent days, and that of course is Chelsea. Chelsea at the time of writing are reported to be considering a bid for Ronaldo. Now even though I think this is a deal that is incredibly unlikely, I wouldn't rule it out completely, and so how would Ronaldo fit in at Chelsea, and would he be a success? Well first, let's look at my third choice team which was Napoli. So this is a deal that of the three I've analysed is probably the most unlikely. So Napoli are in the Champions League and finished just seven points behind eventual champions AC Milan in third and so Ronaldo would be moving to a club competing for a domestic title next season and a favourite to get out of the Champions League group stages especially with Ronaldo in the side. Ronaldo would be the exact type of iconic player that the Napoli faithful would adore especially in his quest to win the Scudetto for the first time since Diego Maradona led Napoli to the 1990 Serie A title. However like Milan the financial implications of this deal do make it unlikely. Napoli are reportedly looking to sell big name players to reduce their 
better overall wage budget. So knowing that, any deal for Ronaldo seems incredibly unlikely, and this Victor Osimhen was sold for £70 million plus. So what about Chelsea? Yes, this deal should be impossible with United refusing to sell Ronaldo to a league rival at any cost, but let's say that the United board are stupid enough to allow Ronaldo to make a move, getting a transfer fee hopefully between £15 and £25 million at least, would Ronaldo fit Tuchel's system? But with Chelsea already having brought in Raheem Sterling, I could envisage a front three in Tuchel's 3-4-3 system of Havertz and Sterling playing just behind Ronaldo. I think from a counter-attacking perspective, this three would work perfectly, with both Havertz and Sterling being the players to drop into the space behind the opposition's midfield, receive the ball and then drive the attack forward into the final third. With Ronaldo's movement ahead and one of Havertz or Sterling making a secondary run, Chelsea could have a deadly counter-attack. I just think having Ronaldo in the team instead of Lukaku is going to give Chelsea the goal-scoring edge that they didn't have last season. And so I think Ronaldo's finishing ability alone will drastically improve Chelsea. I think Ronaldo's insertion into that Chelsea side alongside Raheem Sterling and a centre-back and potentially a left wing-back as well would put Chelsea firmly in the title question. So I think from Chelsea's point of view, if they can get Ronaldo on a one or two-year deal on a salary of around £25 million, pounds, and I think it's a deal Chelsea should be trying to do. However, from Manchester United's point of view, there's no way this deal can happen. And from Ronaldo's as well, it seems like a strange move to go to a league rival, but not a team in the top two and potentially a team that could be competing with Manchester United next season for the top four spots. I think a move to Bayern would be the best option for all parties. Ronaldo would have the opportunity of winning the Champions League again. Bayern would get a world-class Lewandowski replacement on similar wages, costing around the same once transfer fees and signing on fees are added together. But from Manchester United's point of view, they do lose their best player and goal scorer, but they do free up around £25 million on a wage budget and get a transfer fee around £15 to £20 million, hopefully, or potentially a swap deal with another player. But most importantly, they avoid selling Ronaldo to a league rival. I think United should be trying to get Gnabry from Bayern and allow Ronaldo to move the other way. With Ronaldo being valued at around 20 to 25 million and Gnabry at around 60 million with just one year left on his contract, meaning that United would essentially be paying 35 million pounds plus Ronaldo for Gnabry, they could convince Gnabry to join, which of course is a big if, but if he did, he'd likely be on around 15 million pounds per year at most. And so United would essentially save 10 million pounds from Ronaldo's 2022-2023 contract to Gnabry's. So in reality, United would be paying more like 25 million pounds plus Ronaldo for Gnabry, which to me seems like a very good deal. So let me know what you think of the Ronaldo departure from Manchester United. Where should he go? Who should United sign to replace him? I will be putting out video in the next few days regarding Manchester United transfer news and you can check out some of my other videos which will be linked in the description below.